What up you guys, Chef Billy Parisi here from BillyParisi.com. And today in this bread series, we are gonna be making an amazing bread recipe using Kamu flour. We're doing it in partnership with my homies over at Bob's Red Mill. We are rolling right along in this bread series. Be sure to check out my other bread recipes that I made using a homemade starter or Levant. I show you how to make a starter from beginning all the way to end and how to use it. Two amazing recipes, honestly so delicious my wife texted me this morning she said you need to make bread with starter every single day it's that good and again it's how bread is supposed to be made and baked three ingredients flour water and salt so delicious but today i may be topping that because i'm making something from the motherland italy we are going to be using a pre-ferment called a biga b-i-g-a what this is is a very quick sort of fermentation overnight as little as 10 hours all the way up to 24 hours. You mix together some flour, some water, just a bit of yeast. You let it sit overnight and it becomes bubbly and gassy with a nice light alcohol smell at the end. While it is similar to a starter, it's not a full starter because that takes five days. This is just an overnight process, but you still do get that fermentation, which breaks down the gluten so our stomachs don't have to. You get some really great flavors to this and it's similar to a poolish, and I promise we're gonna to get to that in the next video, but for now, what we need to do is make this bigger. We're gonna start by adding some artisan bread flour to a large tub or container that's already on the scale so I can get that exact measurement. And in a small, separate little bowl, I've got just a hair bit of yeast in there. I'm gonna take some of the water that I'm gonna put into the flour, just into that yeast, give it a little stir with a spoon just to help activate it, get it started. Then we're simply gonna take that, pour it right into the flour. Next, we're gonna add in some water that's around 82 degrees. Remember my studio is a little bit cooler than probably your house is. And then what you wanna do is simply mix this together, squeeze that dough and flour and yeast and water all together. You wanna make sure it's completely combined because you want that yeast to work overnight. And at this point, all you need to do is pop a lid on it, let it sit at room temperature for as little as 10 hours and all the way up to 24 hours. So the difference between a Biga and a Poolish is a Biga uses an overall higher hydration percentage. So I'm at 80% in this recipe where a Poolish may only be 75%. But when you're making the Biga, just the Biga that you're sitting overnight, it uses a lower hydration point than that of a Poolish. So you let those flowers and those types of flavors work as opposed to maybe a higher hydration point, which will be more aromatic, maybe more of that alcohol leathery smell either is amazing this biga is super delicious so look after it's sitting overnight you should come back and see that it's tripled in volume lightly domed at the top you're definitely gonna have some air pockets running through there we are in fantastic shape here so now let's measure out all of our ingredients go ahead and add some artisan bread flour right to a separate large tub on the scale we want those measurements to be exact Next, we're gonna use some of this Bob's Red Mill Kamu flour. It is finely, finely ground. It is a distant relative of modern day Durham wheat. The best thing I can give as an example or a comparison is to Italian zero, zero wheat. It is amazing. It should be used in all your pastas, all your breads. Fantastic flour, a wonderful scent to it. You're gonna absolutely love it. We're just gonna finish off this recipe with a little bit of the ivory wheat to add some nice 100% whole grain in there. Now what we wanna do is sprinkle in some sea salt. Next, we're gonna add in some more active yeast. Now we're gonna add in some water. It's gonna be a little bit hotter. Think 102 to 105 degrees because we want that yeast to be activated right now. We don't need a slow rise. Go ahead and mix that together. Once it is completely combined, now we wanna add in that biga. Using your hands, maybe soaked in a little bit of water, which will help pull it right out, or you can use a rubber spatula, completely up to you. Add it right to that dough recipe, and then again, squeezing that dough through your hands. You want that yeast and that salt and all those flours and the biga to mix completely together. So fold and squeeze, fold and squeeze until it is combined. We are gonna pop a lid on it, 
We're gonna let it sit for 20 minutes. Then we're gonna go right back to that recipe. And just like the other bread recipes, we need to fold and stretch it up. So go ahead and pull it and stretch it just before breaking, fold it, turn it, repeat this process six to eight times, pop a lid on it. We wanna repeat this exact process every 20 minutes for the next 60 minutes. Just like in the other videos, I wanna leave you a bit of knowledge around baking in this one. I've already talked about pre-ferments earlier. What I'm gonna talk about now is folds. You see me doing it and talking about it in every single bread recipe that I made. What you're really doing is strengthening the dough, allowing the gluten to work a little bit more. If you're working in a big bakery, you have those big mixers that can really mix the dough. I mean, for me, it's my hands and my arms and how strong I am. So this allows the dough not to fall and it allows it to kind of stay settled and become a little bit tighter. It's just a really good practice to do while making bread at home. So right now, the dough is done. We've let it sit for an additional two hours after that last final fold. And what we're gonna do at this point is get our benettons or brat forms, or better known as our bread baskets, and we are gonna flour those up really, really well. Let's go back over to the dough. We simply want to bring it out onto a very heavily floured surface. We're cutting it in half, and then we need to fold it. So remember, top right corner to bottom left corner, top left corner to bottom right corner. Fold it one more time, flip it over, and form that nice medium tight ball. It should look absolutely beautiful, just like it does at a bake shop. Go ahead and add those right over to the brat forms. Put them right inside. We're gonna hit it with just a little bit more flour on top. Just like the other recipes, we're gonna add a kitchen towel right over top. We're gonna let these proof for only one hour. And now this is great timing, so go right over to that oven and add in your Dutch oven pots with the lid. We want to preheat this up to 500 degrees. We're gonna let it sit for probably 45 minutes once it's preheated. The hotter the pan, the better. Once it is done and your dough is finished proofing, what I'm gonna do is simply flip it over onto a floured surface. We're gonna gently put it right into that hot Dutch oven pot. Please be careful because it is on fire. I'm gonna score this one, just a couple little marks in there just to make it a little artful. I'm not gonna score the other one because I just wanna see what that's gonna look like at the end. It's going in the oven on 500 degrees, cover it up for 30 minutes. And then at that point, go ahead and take the top off. We're gonna cook it for another 20 to 25 minutes until it's golden brown and finished. And then we're gonna let it rest. Dude, what an incredible recipe. You can see how beautiful it is. Those nice air pockets, it is light, it is fluffy. This would be an amazing sandwich bread or just to eat with butter or jam on it for breakfast. What an amazing recipe and about 10 hours shorter than that of that starter bread. This is amazing. You know we've got to taste some. Oh my gosh. Isn't it funny how like you make something the next day or the next week and it's like the same thing, but for some reason it's better than it was the last. I mean, this is, dude, this is, this is your sandwich bread, bro. This is your garlic bread. Oh my gosh, this is so good. And don't forget, watch these other videos, watch them. Watch the other bread video right here. Do it, do it, do it. Watch it, love it, subscribe. See y'all later. Oh my gosh.